We recently covered the astonishing precision-cut ancient ruins which can be found at Puma Punku within Bolivia. Once an enormous city complex, which still possesses some incredible features. One of the more controversial of these still surviving attractions is undoubtedly the Wall of Humanity. During the 1960s, archaeologists employed by the Bolivian government excavated a temple at Tiahuanaco. Within the walls of the courtyard, hundreds of stone heads were discovered, all with a diverse range of features masterfully built into the architecture. A once perfectly constructed wall, adorned with a variety of different faces, each now believed by a number of independent researchers to represent the different tribes and civilizations which could be found upon our planet at the time. If proven true, it is clearly a controversial reality for academia to explain. How can a wall, supposedly built by the Incas, display faces from all corners of the world, built by people who never traveled intercontinentally? Or does the wall of humanity further support the premise of a world-going advanced civilization actually having once built such sites? Furthermore, and perhaps the most intriguing detail surrounding this ancient artifact, is the addition of two heads made of a noticeably different material that, instead of displaying a possible lost tribe, appears to actually represent what many would now identify as grey aliens. The question is, if the Wall of Humanity does indeed represent the different tribes which could be found all over the world at the time of its creation, then who, or indeed what, do these two faces represent? Are the ancient alien theories true? Did an extraterrestrial race not only once visit our planet, but actually called it home? Clearly, an astonishing ancient artifact which demands more alternative research. When Austrian explorer Arthur Poznanski performed a study on Puma Punku in 1926, he later hypothesized that it was, in fact, one of the oldest archaeological sites on the face of the Earth, an ancient ruin dating back at least 15,000 years ago. Poznanski was one of the first explorers of the modern age to have ever investigated Puma Punku's incredible existence. But as our regular viewers would have predicted, his hypothesis is staunchly denied by academics worldwide. Yet regardless of this, his sound reasoning, and indeed that of many other critically-minded individuals, means that his theory is one many others have arrived at, thus it continues to have many supporters to this day. And although mainstream academia persists in their attempts to place this amazing, and largely inexplicable site's date of construction within permitted timelines, claiming to have carbon dating done at the site which places its origins at around 500 BC, supporters of a greater age dismiss this dating as unreliable, and due to our own in-depth and many years of investigative experience regarding these ruins, tend to agree that the site is indeed far older. And due to there having been an ice age around 10,000 years ago, this dating made by Poznanski would put it right where one would expect to have found it if it was indeed the work of a pre-cataclysmic civilization, with Puma Punku being a surviving relic of their incredible legacy. Additionally, archaeologist and researcher Neil Steed has also investigated a relationship with astronomical alignments he discovered intriguing supporting evidence for this controversial opinion. Finding that it was built to coincide with winter and summer solstice, and a precise alignment with the spring equinox as well. However, these events would have only been perfectly aligned with the temples over 17,000 years ago. We have long argued against a field of study that is not only assumptive in method, but is also conspiratorial in nature. Any dating of any relic which cannot be explained is merely an attempt to muddy the waters of understanding, often obscured with an in-depth volley of detailed and competent investigations into civilizations, we posit merely re-inhabited said sites within known recent well-studied history. This convincing tale of events, however, is short-lived if one explores any of the said sites with a logical eye. 
one soon finds that many characteristics on display are not only found globally, which on its own is compelling proof of a past global superpower, but the countless trilithons, enormous megaliths some reaching into the thousands of tons, along with highly advanced, incredibly accurate, yet unknown masonry techniques all tell a story which academics who never seem to mention said features cannot explain. Not to mention melting pots of ancient academic anomalies, such as that of Puma Punku. How can anyone logically claim that the astonishing precision on show at the site, along with the many basalt megalithic platforms weighing many hundreds of tons, all indicative of a past highly capable, technologically advanced civilization, once having been responsible and once one grasps just how many holes can be found within mainstream opinion, they can be forgiven for doubting said tale of events, especially when those who tell such tales actively attempt to conceal such unexplainable features. Who built Puma Punku? Is it really over 15,000 years old? How would one cut such precision stonework without precision machinery? It is a place which we find highly compelling. The most ancient sites to be found here upon our planet were often created using enormous, erosion-resistant megalithic stones. This use of enormous stone being the reason why many of these structures have indeed survived the eons. And although the actual methods used to move such stones has been lost to history, their existence, and indeed their placement, remains a testament to our lost ancestors' past capabilities. According to modern science, or more specifically, the known laws of physics, many of these stone blocks defy understanding. And although little is known regarding the true builders of such sites, places such as Puma Punku still possesses many megalithic blocks which display the extraordinarily advanced, astonishing feats of block building and precision carving, which we believe were left by a people who flourished an incredibly long time ago. Enormous, precision carved, precisely placed andesite blocks still litter the site. Their existence is undeniable, yet highly controversial. Therefore, predictably, Many of these sites are either quietly investigated or simply ignored, successfully concealing unexplained feats of past engineering. Some of the most visited sites on Earth contain megalith blocks walked past or over without a second thought every day. These stones, however, hold the secret to unraveling the currently attested historical inaccuracies, for they do indeed exist cannot be shifted, and fly in the face of the incomplete history academics are attempting to teach as fact. These same individuals simply fall silent when asked to explain how their currently attested builders of said sites, be it Roman, Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., actually built such structures using such enormous blocks. Additionally, Regardless of these said individuals' apparent qualification to speak on such matters, when one presents any compelling evidence, such as erosion patterns, machine tool marks, highly advanced building techniques, be it anything solid which indicates a far more superior, far older civilization as the true constructors, their lack of true knowledge regarding their apparent specialist subjects always becomes apparent. Additionally, these selected, submissive, often subsequently authoritatively placed individuals have never had the experience to explore such controversial evidence, or indeed, the indicative possibilities attached thereof. This means that, although their knowledge of permitted history is substantial, their overall knowledge regarding the past, and indeed, its possible past inhabitants, will always be severely limited. Yet, fortunately, although it may sometimes feel like an eternal battle, in the end, the truth is always found. An astonishing collection of ancient evidential items and rediscovered historical factors have allowed the argument for an once lost history to have existed, all but now a foregone conclusion. 
A civilization at which some point in our distant past was lost, yet a once highly advanced worldwide culture. The proof that these ruins were all built by the same people or by those who were in contact with each other worldwide is now, we feel, overwhelming. Yet their technological capabilities were just as equally astonishing. Cut from nearly every type of strata, ruins with such precision, not only do they seemingly appear to have been cut with laser technologies, but the Barbara Caves is undoubtedly the jewel in the crowd. When previously looked at by us, we were astonished by the finish of the cave's walls, both in surface and angle, which, thankfully, due to the structure's sheltered nature, have survived for at least 2,300 years in incredible condition. Even more astounding, however, is that this precision has recently been confirmed using modern sonar-like technology, allowing for an incredibly detailed map of each cave to be created each cave's image made from millions of points of reference, revealing, for the first time in well over 2,000 years, just how incredible the creators of these cave systems were, a feat many now believe we could not achieve ourselves. Perfect 180 curvatures on the roofs, perfect 90-degree angles on the doorways, perfectly flat floors, and perfectly vertical walls. The creation of the caves was simply perfect. We feel it is undeniable that whoever created these caves had in their possession incredibly advanced stone-cutting technologies. Yet how this was done and with what are questions which we find hugely intriguing. We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash which quietly sits within India, a temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people, a remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides. They could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which, literally, boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements, perfectly preserved in its original state demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish. Evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi Cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash Temple, also another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone? Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC who ruled over almost the entire country of India, Caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. 
Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this.